Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at a little tiny PC from a company called GMK. This is their Nuck Box, which looks a lot like another device from Chewy that you might have heard about called the Lark Box, but this one has a little bit more RAM. And we're going to be taking a closer look at this mini PC and what it's all about in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that GMK sent this to the channel free of charge. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this little device is all about. Now, the price point on this will vary based on the storage option that you choose. So this one here has 128 gigabytes of storage and sells for $220. There's also a version with 512 gigabytes of storage that sells for $279. But otherwise, the two boxes are identical. It's just the storage that differentiates them. Now, I always like to start off these reviews of these little generic PC boxes with a warning, which is buy at your own risk. And with this box in particular, I am going to emphasize that warning of buying at your own risk. And the reason is, is that I'm seeing a wide range of experiences with this box uh, since it has launched. Some people have had very good experiences, others not so good, and some even got the box dead on arrival and had some problems getting in contact with the company to get a replacement. So I would advise against doing anything really mission critical with this thing and make sure you've got good backups of the data that you're storing on it because you never know when something might happen. And we've been having issues with this particular device related to its video output and those issues began when we started running some benchmarks on it that really started stressing the processor and the issues haven't gone away since and I think there's some issues perhaps in the quality control and manufacturing of this device that lead to a wide range of experiences with its overall product quality. So with that warning out of the way, let's take a look and see what's inside of this thing because the specs here aren't bad. It's got a brand new Intel processor, the Gemini Lake Refresh J4125. We haven't seen a device with one of these chips just yet, so it was fun to play around with that. It's got eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. It appears to be configured in dual channel mode, so we're getting the best video performance out of it. Again, this one's got the 128 gigabyte SSD, but the SSD is upgradable. You just have to pull off the bottom uh, panel there and you've got access to it. It's got a little M SATA drive in there and you can easily swap that out and put in a larger one if you want down the road. So that was pretty cool to have a little bit of upgradability on it. Unfortunately though, there isn't much in the way of ports on this one. So we have seen some of these Gemini Lake devices with three video outputs. This one just has one, an HDMI output here. Uh, we will hook it up to my 4K display in a moment. It does work at 4K 60 Hertz, so that's good. But again, you've only got one output, which is right here. There is a USB Type-C port next to it, but this is only for power. It doesn't support uh, display output. So again, you're going to be limited uh, just to that uh, HDMI output right there. Uh, you have two USB 3.0 ports here that run at 5 gigabits per second. Run-of-the-mill kind of ports there. One of those obviously will be occupied by your keyboard and mouse, so you might want to get a USB hub to accompany this one. Uh, you'll notice here we've got a fan uh, on the top, and what it does is it sucks the air in from the top and blows it out the back. And that's where I think maybe some of these heat issues presented themselves, given the proximity of the air flow to that HDMI connector. Uh, it will get pretty warm when it's running. Uh, not only do you feel the hot air coming out the back of it, but you also feel the case heating up quite a bit. It is an aluminum case, nice and metal, so it's got a good feel to it. And I suspect some of the design uh, intended to use the outer casing here as uh, another heat sink for the device. The fan is pretty noisy because it's so tiny. It has to spin very fast to get the airflow going, and it does kick up quite a bit even when you're doing lower end tasks like web browsing, especially when you have it in 4K mode. On the side here, you've got a headphone microphone jack and a micro SD card reader, and that's pretty much it. A little power button here to get it booted up, and that is the hardware. So let's get this thing loaded up right now. We'll hook it up to my 4K display and see how it does browsing the web. All right, so I've got the box now connected up to a 4K 60 Hertz display. Now, normally I would also be capturing this footage as we shoot the video here, but this will not work with any of my capture hardware. We hooked it up to three or four different boxes. None of them could get a reliable signal. And we've been noticing that the display is cutting out here on the 4K monitor from time to time as well. And we've been noticing that with a number of other displays we have tested with it. 
but their performance otherwise is pretty good on this thing. As you can see, it's rendering the web page uh, really quickly here, even at 4K. Uh, it's really a decent little browsing device, and I think if you don't stress it out too much, it can uh, do the basics here quite well, including word processing and Microsoft Office and all of those sorts of things. Now, a little bit earlier, I connected it up to my television, and it worked fine on that 4K set as well. Uh, one thing to note is that these Gemini Lake chips don't support HDR output, so you're not going to get the highest quality 4K video if you plan on watching Netflix or something, but it will work with Netflix in 4K, provided you install the HEVC extensions and you use the Windows version of the Netflix app, and other video providers should work well there too. However, the 4K video playback performance here isn't great. Uh, this is a video from my Extras channel uh, running at 4K60, and it was dropping a ton of frames as it was playing back. So I don't know if this is going to be the best experience for consuming 4K content, although, of course, you can do things like browse the web and run your word processors and stuff at that 4K resolution. It's just not something I'm going to recommend for video playback or home theater use. And we also ran a benchmark, the browserbench.org speedometer 2.0 test and there we got a score of 47.06 and as you can see here this is a nice bump over what we had with the prior Gemini Lake processor the N4100 that appeared on two really good mini PCs the GPD Micro and the Pepper Jobs that we reviewed last year and you can also see here it's a lot faster than what you might get out of a much less expensive Raspberry Pi. So let's take a look now at its game playing performance. Now this is not something you're going to run Cyberpunk on, but it can do a lot of older games quite well when of course it keeps the display on. Let's take a look at Half-Life 2 running at 1080p. Here's that video glitch I was talking about. This is the sort of thing that happens all the time with our unit here. Uh, but when it is <laughs> lighting up the display, we're getting uh, frame rates north of 60 frames per second at 1080p, which is pretty good for an older game here, so not bad at all. Uh, Rocket League at 720p was staying pretty consistently above 30 frames per second at the lowest setting. So you're not going to have a very pretty image, but it will be playable. So that was pretty cool. Uh, we also checked out Shovel Knight, which is a retro-inspired game. This was running at 1080p at 60 frames per second without any real issues beyond the display uh, cutting out, like I mentioned before. And then we also tried some game streaming on this from the GeForce Now service. This is... Uh, of course, No Man's Sky running at 1080p. Now, this is all running on the GeForce Now server and streaming to us over the internet. But as you can see here, it was working pretty nicely. I did connect it up to Ethernet just to make sure the network wouldn't be an impediment to evaluating performance. And I think if you are doing game streaming, whether it's from GeForce Now or Stadia or some other service, I think you'll have a pretty good experience with this device. They do pretty well at streaming 1080p media, and that is essentially what game streaming is all about. So we had some good experiences there. And again, uh, Ethernet always works best no matter which device you're using. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate benchmark test, we got a score of 3,663. And you'll note that the graphics performance here is pretty similar to what we got out of the Pepper Jobs mini PC with the N4100. And that's because they essentially have the same built-in GPU. But you'll also note here that the faster CPU on the NUC box isn't showing up much here on the physics test. And that's because the Pepper Jobs PC doesn't throttle down. It is very optimally cooled and therefore can run at full performance all the time, whereas this uh, device does have to throttle down a little bit to keep itself from totally overheating. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a score of 96.3%, which is just shy of the 97% passing grade. You can also see what temperature the computer was running at at the time. Uh, so overall, the performance is pretty consistent out of this. I never saw the temperature get too high above 70 degrees Celsius, but the heat that it was generating was enough to create some video problems for us, which again did not begin until we ran that stress test for the first time. So I think some of the components in here are just not well suited for the heat that it generates, even though it is able to keep itself at a constant temperature. Now a little earlier, we also ran Ubuntu on it to see if we can run other operating systems beyond Windows, and Ubuntu 20.10 here booted up just fine. The 4K display was detected properly. We had Wi-Fi, audio, and Bluetooth 
and altogether it felt like a pretty decent Linux experience on here, which is usually the case on these Gemini Lake CPUs, and this one was no exception. So if you're looking to run Linux, it should be able to handle that for you without too many issues. So altogether, I would be a lot more enthusiastic about this box had I not encountered the video issues that we've been talking about here throughout the review. And I've been looking at other reviews of this product. Some people have had really good experiences, others not so good. Uh, customers have been reporting some issues similar to what I've been experiencing here as well. And that leads me to think they've got some quality control issues to work out because our problems did not begin until we put it under load for the very first time. And now those video issues happen all the time, irrespective of whether or not it's under load. And that's something I think you should be thinking about uh, before purchasing one of these things. And it's unfortunate because the performance when the display is working is actually pretty good on this. So I'm gonna say hold off for a little bit on this. Let's see if they can work out some of their quality control issues. And until next time, this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Jim Peter, Tom Albrecht, Frank Lewandowski, Mark Bollinger, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.